Welcome back to the channel. I'm Stuart Lee, and today I'm going to walk you through a real quick tutorial on how to use Pear Deck. Pear Deck is a wonderful interactive tool. It takes your Google Slides, it makes them interactive. You can even send them home and let students work on them at their own pace. Or if you ever get back into the classroom with your students, you can actually walk them through uh, the, the slides that you want them to and get feedback instantly um, by playing out le uh, questions that the students interact with or on the fly questions. And you could even do this at distance uh, with on the fly questions if you're walking your students through some sort of a synchronous Google Hangouts, Google Meet, Zoom kind of conference. Uh, so let's get into to Pear Deck and see how that looks. So I've got just pulled up a random uh, not planned ahead at all uh, Google Slides deck. Um, and I just got this out of my Google Drive and pulled up Google Slides. Now I either had one already created or I converted one to Google Slides from PowerPoint. But the important thing to remember is you can't take a PowerPoint and use Pear Deck add-on for it. So you have to do the conversion process to Google Slides, uh, which is very simple. It's under File. Um, and it would just be an option to save as Google Slide if it was this.ppt or something like that. Um, so anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to add the Pear Deck add-on. So I'm going to get add-ons. Now, if you notice, I've already got it, but I'm going to walk you through how to get it. So we come up here and we're just going to do a search for Pear Deck. And then we'll get Pear Deck. We can click on it. And then because I already have it installed, it says for me to uninstall it because I've already got it. But you would obviously go ahead and click the install. It is 100% free. You get a 30 day free trial when you sign up for the first time. And right now, because of COVID-19, uh, your, your 30 day free trial turns into a however long you need it free trial kind of situation. Just contact Pear Deck. And if you need more information on that, let me know and I can get you in touch with the company. By the way, this is by no means sponsored by Pear Deck. I get no kickbacks from them. This is just a company that I really believe in and that I really like using. And I used back when I was in the classroom, back when Pear Deck was a very, very simple tool. Uh, it has grown tremendously since then and I still endorse it. I still like it. It's still one of my go-tos in my tool bag. Um, I've got some real great people there that I know. Um, Pear Deck is a wonderful company to work with. They really care about students. They really care about teachers. So anyway, you get your, your add-on. Um, so now we're back in our presentation and I'm going to go to add-ons and I'm going to go to Pear Deck and open the add-on. This is basically how you need to interact with it. You can go to the website and there are some features at the website that I'm going to talk about later on in this video, but real quick, this is how you interact with your lesson. So there is a template library. So if I click on that, I got some bell ringers that I can pick from, um, as you come in and get settled, follow the instructions and it asks you for stuff. Uh, what did you learn from your homework? Draw two things you may already know about today's topic. These are pre-made questions for the beginning of the lesson. Um, we've got some for during the lesson. Some true faults. Uh, how are you feeling? You know, I'm, I'm good to go. Let's keep going. I'm, I'm okay. Or, hey, I need to review. Um, you know, there's a lot of just pre-made stuff that they try to, to make for you to make things easier. And then some exit tickets, some end of lesson things. You know, just some basics. How are you feeling today about the lesson? Or give me some information that you learned from today's lesson. Reflect on today's activities. Uh, so you can really go through here and not put a lot of effort into creating questions and question types. They're already made for you uh, in a lot of cases. Now I can back all the way out of that. And then I can come down here and I can come down here and ask my own questions. So if I wanted to do a text question, a multiple choice, numbers, websites, that kind of thing. But the thing I wanted to show you real quick again in the template library is down here towards the bottom, you have subject areas. In these subject area ones, so let's just take a look at science. Here's a, a blank atom, draw it in. Here's a periodic table. Um, what's happening in this image with different molecules? A graphing one, time versus distance. Uh, so there's a lot of pre-made content already here for you by your different subject areas. Uh, there is not an ELA right now. Uh, there is. There wasn't a while ago. There is now. They are constantly adding to this all the time. Uh, so get in here and check it out. There's K2 for your littles. Uh, they, they are making this a ro as robust as possible, and they are doing this with excellent quality and paying attention to keeping students and teachers at the forefront 
it is your classroom. They're not telling you how to teach. They're giving you the tools to teach better. So the social emotional learning one is great also. And then the critical thinking one, those are some great questions as well. Uh, be sure to explore all of those. So if I wanted to come in here and ask a question, so I'll pick the slide that I want to ask the question and I want to do a draggable. So I'm going to click the draggable and after it works for a second, uh, it gives me my options. So if I wanted to do a dot or a map pin or a thumbs up, a thumbs down, I can add another one. So now I've got a thumbs up that is red and a thumbs down that is blue. Um, and I can update the slide. So it's going to add the interactiveness. And now you see Perry, which is the, the pair's name, uh, is down here. And he's telling me as the teacher, so I'm looking at this from the teacher review, that I'm getting a thumbs up and a thumbs down option. Um, and then it also says down here, this is a draggable slide. And I can edit anything I want. So I can put on this, this slide really anything that I want to. And so now I can talk about whatever's on the slide and there's the, the got it question. And so the kids know whether they need to drag to the thumbs up and thumbs down. Now let's take a look at what this is going to look like. The cool thing about Pear Deck is that anybody can be a student, including the teacher who's presenting it. So this is how you would present your Pear Deck. Once you have your questions in um, and you can go through here and pick all kinds of different questions. I've got multiple questions already done in here. So we're going to go through some of those and what they look like. Um, now, but then to present it, you don't present from up here like you normally would in a Google slide. You present from the Pear Deck. So you're going to present the lesson here and it's going to open up a new window. It could ask you to sign in. And so now I'm in. So I can either grab this link or invite an entire Google Classroom. So if I use Google Classroom, I can actually invite the whole class just by clicking here. It'll connect to my Google Classrooms. It'll ask me which classroom I wanted to do. I can invite this section and boom, they already have the invite. I can grab this link. The link is now copied. I can put that in Remind app or an email or however else I might get that out, you know, Class Dojo, anything like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new tab and I'm just going to paste that link in. So now you can see that I'm acting as a student and it always asks you how you're feeling today when you're a student. Now, students can also go to joinpd.com and type in this code. This is how you used to have to use Pear Deck all the time. Uh, before you had the link and before you had a Google Classroom ability, you had to use this code and you had to go to joinpd.com. That still works. So you, your students can just go to joinpd.com and then you just give them this code whenever you want to go to a new place um, or to a new one. So once you have a student in, which I have a student in now, um, I'm going to go ahead and start the class. So this is my teacher view. This is my student view. I can look at both views on the same computer. I don't have to be signed out or signed in differently. It doesn't, it doesn't get confusing. I can do it both ways. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it on student paste. So I click the three dots down here and I get various options, but I'm going to turn on student paste. And now that it's on student paste, Let's make sure I, I know what I have. It gives me the link here again in case I need it. And I say, okay, I got it. And now I can look real quick and I'm on student paste. So that means that the students now can go through at their own leisure. So if I've got it, I'm going to click the thumbs up for I got it. That's the draggable one that we made a while ago. The next slide has nothing on it. So uh, what is your experience using Pear Deck? Uh, I'm already using it. So these are this is a question slide, multiple choice that I created. Uh, I'm new. Here we go. I've seen Pear Deck being used. We can say whatever we want to. I go to the next slide. It gives me some information. In my original demonstration, I was asking people peanut butter, vanilla, or chocolate. Uh, I'm going to pick chocolate, obviously, and move on to the next one. Here is a, dra a, a drawing one. So we're looking at number lines and three students. So you, you solve the math and then you can pick the pencil and I'm going to pick yellow as my color and I can mark off on the number line where I need to be. If I need to draw some numbers, I can do this too. 
Uh, but now that I've shown you a few of the questions and a few of the ways that students can interact, let's go back over to the teacher side and let's look at the, the results. So I'm going to show responses. So anytime there's, see on this slide, there's no options. There's no questions. So on this slide, there is, I can show responses and here's my response. Um, now there's only the one student in here responding. So we only see one response, but if there was multiple students, we'd see multiple uh, students responses. Uh, there's no questions on here. There was a question on here. So I'm going to show response. And now I can see that one student said that they've been using Pear Deck for a while. I'll show responses on here and chocolate was the favorite. Now I can also open the dashboard. And by opening the dashboard, I can actually see who said what. So you see, I'm the student here because I'm signed in. Let me make this bigger. So if there was more than one student, you would see more than one name uh, with their response. So there's no questions on here, but there was on here. And I can see that Stuart Lee is the one that answered this. Um, if I go to this view, now I see the answer and the student's name. And I would see this tiled across if there was more than one student. Uh, for this one, uh, I can see Stuart Lee picked chocolate. And so instead of having the grid layout where I just see a summary of the class, all I have to do is go over to, or I'm sorry, the overlaid layout gives me a summary of the class. The grid layout gives me the individual students. Um, now, it also does it over here on the big screen. But in this view, I get to see in the teacher dashboard view, I get to see the names of the students too. So if as a teacher, I wanted to show students, you know, this is what the class picked, then I can show students the summary without showing them the names. Does that make sense? Now on the number line one, I'm going to show the responses and I can see the responses there. If I want to see who said that one, I pull up my dashboard. Now I go to that one and I can see that Stuart Lee is the one that put four plus four and drew at the spots. I don't pretend to think that I did this one right. I was just simply showing you. Um, we can do all kinds of questions that students can respond to in these. Uh, they can do check marks. They can do, you know, this is just a drawing slide. So I put the box on this slide and the student draws the check mark uh, on the slide. We can actually send them to another web page. So if I put a link to a web page as a question, then that web page pops up along with the Pear Deck slides. So they don't have to go anywhere else. This is a web page within my slide presentation now. So the students aren't going anywhere else on their own. They're just going through the slides because you can see we still got control over my slides down here but I can actually interact with this website from within the slide, the Pear Deck slides. I'm still on slide nine, but I'm interacting with a new website. So that's actually a really cool feature. Um, I can click and drag these balls to wherever I need them to go. So I can mark nouns and verbs with different colors or with different shapes, depending on how we have these set up. And then, like I said, as the teacher, I can go back in my dashboard and I can see who said what, how they did it. So I can do that interaction. I can kind of gauge where they are. I can see if they're actually paying attention, less, you know, going through the slides as they're supposed to, or if they're just blowing through it and not really paying attention to it, not doing the interactive part. Um, honestly, the best way to learn how to use Pear Deck other than just what I just walked you through is to get your hands on it and just kind of play with it. See what all is available. See what all you can do with it. Um, and now I can close whatever I want because I can always get back into anything I need to do. Now, let's just say as a teacher, I do close out and, and we're still in as a student. I'm just going to leave that. But let's just say we do close out. We can always go back to our presentation here. And instead of presenting again, Let's go to PearDeck.com and let's log in as a teacher because there's one other thing I want to show you while we're here. Um, now, make sure you're logged in as you. 
you can go back and present and look at sessions that are in progress because this is a student led section session. It's still in progress. I can leave it in progress for as long as I want to. And when I'm done with it, I can click on it. I can start presenting from here. I can go to present view. I can just go ahead and pull up my dashboard view or I can turn off student paste from here. I can end the session from here and I can change the name of it from here. So you can actually manage everything from Pear Deck .com, um, or you can just run everything through your Google Slides. It works just as well both ways. Um, the Pear Pop is a new feature and it has pre-made stuff. So if you're having a hard time getting started or you just say, hey, uh, I, I need something real quick, a KWL chart, um, it's in here. Boom. It's done for you. Here's the code for it. I don't have to go through and create a uh, Google Slides and then open up my add-on. I can just go to paradeck.com, go to that, say, hey, I know there's a KWL chart there. Let me grab this, get the students in here, and go ahead and get rolling with my KWL chart. Um, so there's a lot to be offered. There's a lot of, of great things that you can do with Pear Deck. Now, the free version of Pear Deck, once your 30 days is over or however long your free trial is, however long that, when you have to go back to the free version, if you don't get the paid version of it, um, you still have all the same interactions. You don't lose question types, that kind of thing. What you do lose is the ability to track who said what. So I don't know which student answered which question. Uh, so it makes it a little harder if you're gonna do it for any kind of real uh, recorded formative assessments. Now class, you know, class responses, kind of gauging where everybody is in the class um, as a whole, it's still there, still a valuable tool. But being able to say that Stuart Lee is, is really struggling on this particular question type, um, and then I can work with Stuart Lee separately, that kind of goes away on the free version uh, once you lose your, your trial status, your, your paid trial status. Uh, but um, it's a valuable tool, it's great. You can take what you already have, make it interactive, make it engaging, make it more engaging, and send it to the students. Students can work through it on their own. You can see who did what. Um, very valuable tool. Like I said, you can even pull in websites from outside into this slide deck. So you're not sending kids to websites. You're actually pulling them into here and making it more interactive. Um, this is your one-stop shop for distance learning, engaging students at a distance, uh, even engaging students in the classroom once everybody's back in the classroom. So um, I hope you found this, this video helpful. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and click the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications of new videos coming out in the future. And then give me a thumbs up if you like my content. Uh, and if you didn't, honestly, give me a thumbs down. Let me know what you thought of it so I know how to make better videos for next time. But until then, uh, stay safe out there and uh, thanks for visiting and we'll see you next time.